Hey folks, in this video, I'm going to share with you some of the videos I took when I was apartment hunting, searching in Lisbon, Portugal. Hopefully this can be helpful uh, for you. When I was looking for apartments, I was kind of looking for a video similar to this. This is going to show you some of the amenities and the costs um, per amenities or give you at least some ideas so that if you are considering moving to Lisbon, um, you, you at least have something to go by. Um, so these are not in the order in which... Um, I filmed them so I'll go over that I'll tell you about pricing I'm probably don't remember the square footage of many of them but you can kind of see how large they are from the video which I'm going to show you now two things these videos that I took with was of course when I first moved there um, last June and this was before the health pandemic so the prices that are in this video are going to be prior to this global um, health crisis that we have so after the crisis i would suspect that the prices may drop in lisbon but don't know so just want you to know that secondly i never planned on showing these videos to anyone so the quality may suck so don't get caught up on that but hopefully you'll get some value toward the end of the video if you're considering move to lisbon there are a ton of things you should consider in regards to getting apartments that i didn't know about but i'll talk about that toward the end right now you just get to see um some of the things and some of the apartments i checked out okay so i'll watch it with you so that we can kind of go over some of the things so this particular apartment was my favorite apartment i saw this toward the end um, at the time when I moved to Portugal, I moved there by myself, I met a gentleman and we ended up moving in together. So we were together for like six months. This apartment was supposed to be for him and I, which is why it's so large. This apartment was a three bedroom, four bedroom, three bathroom, I think. So um, this was in Lumiere, Portugal, which uh, is part of Lisbon, but it's um, a little bit outside the city. It took me like a 20 minute uber ride outside of uh, estefania so this is a kitchen big large kitchen it had a laundry room which had a wash and dryer had a large uh that was a refrigerator and a freezer um so it had all the great amenities this part right here it had a waterless water heater what i found living in portugal is sometimes the water heaters are small in your um, apartments and so the hot water runs out quickly so i found a better um experience if the apartment had a uh, waterless hot water heater so that's just a tip I didn't know until I came here so this is a half bathroom um, and there were two suites in this particular apartment which you'll see right here there were two bedrooms really good closet space and everything in this apartment um, and then there was a suite which you'll see in a bit so this apartment was 2200 and they wanted a year lease and this is the bath the uh, community bathroom here and then this is the other suite, which is a really good sized bathroom. Like I was obsessed with this um, apartment. The complex was a little bit out of the city. It it uh, doesn't had didn't, excuse me, it didn't have any. Um, okay, so this is a living room area, and this is some of the stuff you'll see. It had a separate entrance there. This goes out on the deck, which you saw earlier, and this was the I guess another bedroom suite, a little bit on the small side. Um, but it was you know perfect for just uh the two of us at the time we are no longer together so now i'm back to searching for an apartment just for me anyway um so right here i was asking the real estate agent if this was a air conditioner because of course the higher up you are it'll get hot i wanted to confirm that that was an air conditioner or a heater and i think it was both oh so this apartment was in alfama which is a more historic part of lisbon and the apartment was adorable, as you can see. This area right here was actually a terrace of an Airbnb. So when they're renting that Airbnb, anyone sitting on that terrace is like right there, kind of like in your living room, which I did not like. This was supposed to be like a temporary rental that I was considering. It's two bedrooms um, and they wanted 1,200 a month for this particular apartment. And that did include in utilities and the furniture, which I hadn't seen. So I thought the price was decent. The ceiling was a little low. So there were a couple of things that um, if I wanted to do something temporary would be good. But I think when you are considering Airbnbs, which is going to be a surplus of them in the future, they're kind of created for temporary use. And so you want to make sure you have things like an oven and things you would need. Um, for long-term stay if that's what you plan on doing and some of these airbnbs don't have that so consider that's a big deal um, this is the street view from the apartment 
which, you know, Alfama, again, is one of the historic parts and it has a lot of charm, a lot of character, um, but the walls tend to be thin. Um, so you do have to look out for that. And again, toward the end of the video, I'll talk to you about some things you should consider when getting your apartment. So it had really good closet space and of course you can see the bedrooms. Okay, so this apartment was actually in Saldana. This was a new um, renovation for the whole building and it was beautiful. No one had lived in it before. This was the, they were renting the whole part, the whole building. So this is a two bedroom that was on the first floor. Um, so you got this, you know, beautiful kind of extended living room because you could just open it up and, and open the doors and have this extended living room. My friend was taking um, this video, which is why you see me in the background. And this one, particularly on the first floor, had closet space. I don't know why, but in this, on the first floor, the room seems substantially smaller than they did upstairs, which you'll see in a bit. So this is on the first floor. The layout throughout the apartment is pretty much the same. Where the bathrooms are located, they're located the same place in all of the apartment. This is, a, I guess you would call it the master suite because the, there's a bathroom in it. Or was there a bath? Yeah, the bathroom's inside. So that's kind of what that is. And then I'm going to show you going, oh, this is what I didn't like about the apartment on the first floor is as you can see out the window, I didn't want outside to be in my bedroom like that. So I wanted to go on a higher floor. I tend to like higher floors when I'm getting an apartment. So this is where the washer um, is in the hot water tank. So you can see that. Now this is on the higher floors. Again, the layout is still the same. This is the first bedroom. You see how it just feels bigger? I don't know if it's because of the larger window, but upstairs on the top floor, um, it seemed larger. So this is the second bedroom that you just saw from the first floor. And look how much larger it looks. Doesn't that seem larger? I don't know. They say it's the same square footage, but it just didn't feel that way to me. So um, this one, when you, or on the higher floors, of course, you get a balcony and opposed to, um, you know, uh, being on the ground floor. So this apartment was 1,200. And when I was attempting to get this apartment, they wanted me to put like $7,000, 7,000 7, euros down for this apartment, which is why I didn't end up getting it. I thought that was a ridiculous down payment. They wanted like three months deposit and then a month just something foolish and I just felt like they were taking advantage of me so I just said no and I didn't uh, get the apartment and um, this is kind of what the hallway looks like and again this was on the top floor so these two were available as well now this particular apartment I saw when I first came to uh, Portugal. I met someone on the plane who lived there who has just been really awesome about helping me get acclimated with the area and their friend was renting um, apartment and that's what you see here. Gorgeous, gorgeous apartment. So much attention to detail but for it to be just me it just seemed like a little bit of overkill um, but you can take a look at the apartment and see the amenities. I love how the refrigerators are kind of like seamlessly into the kitchen and it's it's a really beautiful place. Um, this bet This was a two bedroom with like a loft um, apartment. And I don't remember how, I think they wanted like three uh, 3,000 euros for this apartment. So it was completely out of my price range. Um, and it was just me, it just didn't seem like I needed all that. But you know, you can uh, view this and um, see how you feel. Okay, so this apartment was a two bedroom with with the master bedroom in more of a loft. This was the first apartment, one of the first apartments that I tried to get while in Portugal. And apparently um, people outbid me and I didn't get the apartment, but I thought it was super cute. It was semi-furnished as you can see, had two bathrooms, washer and dryer, well washer, 
Um, here's a second bathroom, which was a really, really good size. Um, and then upstairs, which you'll see in a second, was the loft. And this particular apartment was in Estefania. Um, it, the location was perfect. It wasn't far. It was wasn't far from the metro and all the stores. Like I was obsessed with this apartment. I thought it was really cute and really small just for me um, when moving out of the country. But someone outbid me. So here, someone can outbid you on an apartment. I didn't even know that was a thing because as a, in DC, you just pay what's advertised and pay your deposits and it's first come first serve. But no one can outbid you in an apartment in lisbon that was the case so i missed out on a lot of apartments because of that Now, this particular apartment was a, another one of my favorites, if I were to say this. This one was actually in the city. This was a three bedroom, excuse me, four bedroom, three bathroom apartment. It's gorgeous. It was right in the city. I can't remember the area name. It wasn't too far from Estefania. Um, it was it was really nice. And at the time, in this particular, I was still in a relationship, so we were looking for something larger for um or me and the family. Um, so that's why it's so many bedrooms. Um, it had great storage, a beautiful view, which you'll see in a minute. The issue was in order to move an apartment, this person wanted 14,000 euros to move in. They wanted six months up front, which, um, was a pro which just seemed ludicrous. I remember writing an email like, are you telling me you want $14,000 for me to move into this apartment? So naturally, I just thought that was ridiculous because I could buy a house if I'm putting that much down. Um, but they wanted, I think they wanted like initially six months rent and some amount of deposits. It was just ridiculous. So this is the last apartment I saw before COVID-19. Uh, affected the um, country since then the price on this apartment has dropped down dramatically and I'm actually still interested in it so who knows um, if it's still available or the pricing comes down maybe um, it could be my new home so I hope this was helpful and I'm gonna go over some things you should consider if you're thinking about getting an apartment in Lisbon Portugal so let's get into it okay folks so now we're gonna talk about what you should know when getting an apartment um, in Lisbon so one of the things that we tend to use in the States to get rooms or look for apartments is Craigslist I found using Craigslist in Lisbon is a waste of time it's a lot of scams on Craigslist so I would recommend that you don't use it there's other websites you can use um, one of my favorites is idealista um, dot PT that can give you um, some options as to where to get apartments now some of the apartment scams, they're not just uh, for Portugal. Anywhere you go, you can potentially experience apartment scam. Typically, what it looks like is someone will list an extremely beautiful apartment online, and it will probably be below market value. So that'll make you more anxious and want to hurry up and reach out to the person, which will only allow you to reach out to them via email versus telephone number. And then when you email them, they'll give you this long, drawn-out explanation as to why this particular apartment is somehow emotionally connected to them and you can't see the apartment but they still want your money just know that if anyone is asking for your money before you see it then it is probably a scam so try to avoid that now thin walls some of the uh, insulation in the apartments in various parts of lisbon are non-existent so you kind of have to be careful with that uh what I found that even in, when I was staying in Kishkais, um, I could literally hear what my neighbor was thinking. It, the walls were so thin. So when you're uh, looking for apartments, uh, look into that, kind of check that if you can, and make sure that they are actually renting an apartment that is legally an actual apartment. One of the things you also want to look at into the uh, efficiency, they have a rating. They also have a rating on Idealista on the website. If you scroll down to the bottom, it'll tell you a through F in regards to the efficiency and it's important because if you don't look at that when the winter comes you can find yourself having an extremely high utility bill 
or electric bill because you had to, you know, blast your heat in order to keep your apartment uh, warm. So consider that and ask for that listing because it should help you to kind of be able to base what your utilities are going to be when it gets cold uh, here in uh, Lisbon. One of the other things you can be aware of is unreasonable deposits. This may not happen so much um, after the pandemic as it was uh, prior, but many of the times when I didn't get an apartment, it was because of a ridiculous deposit. So it is standard, particularly in the U.S., to have uh, first month's, last month's security deposit. Um, so you may be paying three months rent, maybe four months if they if you don't live in the country and they need some type of backing or guarantor. But six months and a whole year, like that's just unreasonable. You can just go buy a house and not waste, you know, time with that. So I ran into that a lot, but the market was so hot that apartments were literally kind of leaving pretty quickly. So that may be why I experienced that. But since things got, you know, closer toward the end and the market starts slowing down, I saw it a little bit less. So you may not have to deal with that. And one of the other things is considering whether it be in Lisbon, but considering the time of year that you're going to be moving, because you know, wherever you are, people tend to like to move during the spring or the summer. No one wants to be dealing with moving furniture in the winter and cold months. But in those winter and cold months, rents tend to be substantially cheaper and you're not really battling other people for a particular apartment. So just consider it. It's not necessary, but I wish I would have done that before um, if I would have thought about it. So I hope these tips are uh, helpful to you and I hope, you know, the apartment search was helpful. And, you know, until next time.